Hey everybody, this is Tom from Talon Guitar Works. Today I'm going to do the review on the, the best-selling Amazon necks that are out there. And all these necks are from China. Not one. I ordered seven. I've got five of them here. One of them's not coming until January for some reason. But these necks, every one is wrong. Uh, they're listed that they're ST style necks, which is Stratocaster, and that they're direct replacement necks for your Stratocaster. What you can find out in some cases is this part of the neck is about a quarter inch too long to get the guitar to intonate. The other thing you're going to see on the neck is that the fretboard radius not only isn't consistent, it's just wrong. They say they're all 9.5. Not one of them is 9.5. Then we're going to get down to the heels. And the heels on these are all listed at, at 56 millimeters. So I'm going to go ahead and put this out there and get this digital caliper on there. And this one, if you can see that, is 55.6. Now that's still above what a uh, standard Fender... Uh, neck pocket is but I've got some of these that are way up there they're like 56 and three quarters and um, if it's bigger is it necessarily bad no it's not necessarily bad because you can sand it down to get a really good fit on your neck pocket if it's too small there's nothing you could do with it but all these necks um, some of them claim they're finished they're all raw Every one of them is raw. So as a minimum, this is going to take uh, true oil or tongue oil on the back of it so it doesn't pick up every bit of dirt out there. Every one of the, um, the tuning machine holes are at 10 millimeter, which is, hey, you got that right. They said that they came with bone nuts. Um, this one's obviously a plastic nut. And that nut is a way too proud. And it's going to cause um, note problems at the first fret. It's going to have to be taken down quite a bit. Here's another one. It's, it's jacked way up there. And then we've got some of the ones. These claim they're bone nuts. And they really don't sit in the pockets well. They basically fall out. Um, when you start messing with them. Now what they do have and what these influencers on YouTube are hooking everybody with, because I watched three of them talk about how great these necks are. What they're talking about is they'll do the fret test. Hey man, uh, anybody can get the fret ends nice. And they did get them nice. But if the fretboard itself isn't the correct radius all the way across, once again, you get down here, you start bending notes, and they go dead, and you're like, why are my notes going dead? Well, your fretboard radius is going to control the radius of your frets. It's just common sense. And if your fretboard radius is wrong, frets should have never been put in the guitar. Along with that extra quarter inch of neck heel you got, that's got to come off. Now, I heard one YouTube guy go, I'm going to build a jig, and I'm going to route it off. Don't do it. Use anything but a router on this end grain because you will have a chip out on there. I've tried it. I've had chip outs. First pass, I made it. I was like, I got this. Second pass, started getting cocky. Third pass, I had a chip out about three inches down the side. It's just inevitable. You're working with a router that's working on end grain. Don't do it. Sand it. Sand it down, use a belt sander, use anything but a router to get that back in position. So, what do I have to do to get these necks working? Well, I have to get the, the neck length right. And uh, if I pick up a Stratocaster neck and show you this, hang on, or a Stratocaster body. And this is a Strat body. It's not a knockoff strap body, it's a strap body. Now, when this neck is in the pocket all the way, 
from the saddle, I need 12.75 inches at the 12th fret. Right now, this thing's all the way seated, and I'm almost there. I'm a little bit shy, which means all my saddles are going to be extended as far as they can get unless I take some off. Now, this one may only need about an eighth of an inch off the back. And some people say, well, why don't you just take it out of the neck pocket? Some guitars you can, some guitars you can't. Depends on where the position of that first pickup is, and if it's a single coil, or if it's a humbucking pickup. So, what would I do? All right, now, I didn't pay a lot for any of these necks. I think the most inexpensive might have been about $35, and the most expensive about $74. Um, so, the truss rod value, uh, the maple value, the fretboard, um, I would lose the frets, resand the fretboards, refret it, and uh, put a new nut on it, and have a working neck. You know, I'm going to throw another $60 into it. Now, what would I do if I was you, the consumer? And the influencers on YouTube say, hey, these are really great necks off of Amazon. Hey, go to a company like Stratosphere. Get a fender replacement neck. Drop the $199 or $189 or get the Mighty Might replacement neck that's going to be able to be intonated, that's going to have the correct fretboard radius. Um, it might have rough fret ends on the Mighty Might. It probably won't. But you could dress those up a lot easier than pulling all the frets, re radiusing the fretboard, and refretting the entire knock and putting a new knot on it. Just my opinion. Um, like I said, if you're an influencer and you go to one of these companies and say, I'm going to write a review, they are going to go through their stock and get you the best they possibly can. But by what I'm seeing on here, there's no quality control whatsoever. Um, this is the Flame Maple. This was the most expensive one. And ta-da! We had to shim the skunk stripe because we did it wrong. And the skunk stripe all the way across the back is indented into the neck. It may or may not bother you. This is the only one that was finished, by the way. Uh, this is an oil finish on here. And uh, it's a shame. It's close, but it's still no cigar. And uh, that's what you're getting from Amazon. So um, all of these came out of the basic same seller because I got basically the same card saying, contact us if you have a problem because no go to eBay first. I didn't go to eBay. I didn't buy them on eBay. I bought them on Amazon. But I'm going to uh, send them an email. And in the world of CNC Next, coming out of China. They're still overlooking a lot of stuff. This neck didn't even get finished sanded. Um, it's a PRS style headstock, kind of why I ordered it. Um, I like the, the string pull on those, along with the six in line. But once again, we're a quarter inch long on the heel, so it's never gonna end today on the guitar. So, uh, on a 25 and a half anyway. What it will be is about 26. And if you put one of these on like that and you didn't notice it, right? What you will notice is your strings, your, if you put nines on, they're gonna feel like 11s. If you put 10s on, they're gonna feel like 12s. The string tension is gonna be so tight because you increase the scale length that it's not gonna be comfortable to play, and you're gonna notice that immediately. And these guys on YouTube should notice that too, as soon as they put it on the guitar. So that's it for today's show. I'll be working on these till the cows come home to use them, and I'll contact uh, old Moon Baby here, Moon Unit, Moon Cake, and uh, let them know, hey, uh, you, you product not so good, so.
it is what it is. Uh, I'm just trying to help you avoid the pitfalls. Like I said, if you buy a Mighty Might or a, um, I can't think of their name right now. They're up here in the Northeast. Um, a quality neck, right? Replacement neck or a fender replacement neck. You're getting what you played for, uh, paid for. And you're not going to have the twist possibility in it uh, from them using green wood. And uh, you're going to be a lot happier with your purchase in the long run. You know, if I was waiting for this to complete a guitar and it came in and I saw it, I'd be pissed. I'd be, you know, like, son of a bitch. Now, I can't make my own necks right now because I'm still recovering, right? Uh, I'm thinking about getting one of those catcher's chest protectors and uh, going from there. Now, I'm going to wait to two months and then just be able to do it. But, um, yeah, running a, a sanding beam on this isn't going to be a big problem. Uh, it's a shame. The frets uh, aren't jumbo frets either. They're uh, maybe a medium jumbo. Uh, they're not as wide. They did do a pretty good job on them, but like I said, if you do a good job on the frets, but the radius isn't on the fretboard correctly, it's all for naught, man. It's, it's not going to do anything for you, especially if you're playing down below the 12th fret. And I didn't check fallaways on these. I did check scales. And I also did rock all of them. And every one of them's got high frets. So, and the high frets a lot of times are because the fretboard wasn't radius correctly. The fretboard is radius perfectly where you put your hoops on there and you got no daylight coming through. You're good to go. And it's consistent from the first fret down to the 21st, 22nd, 23rd, 24th, whatever you're doing. You're good to go then. It's the, the frets have to follow the contour of the radius of the fretboard. Um, if the radius is inconsistent, the frets are inconsistent. If the frets are inconsistent, they're going to be high and low frets all over the fretboard, which means a fret level and dress on top of everything else. Uh, for me, it's cheaper to pull the frets, re-radius the fretboard, and do another fret job. So this is Tom at Talon Guitar Works wishing you a Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays and uh, your cautions out there about buying Amazon deals that are too good to be true. They are. Um, go buy something that's made uh, out of quality. It's got a good return policy and isn't going to piss you off in the end. So if you like the video, subscribe to the channel. And uh, we're going to be putting a lot more videos out through my recovery. So take care.